Here is another extract from the IFR Procedures app, which is currently being beta tested on our servers. Today we're going to discuss the terminal aerodrome forecast and its significance in filing an IFR flight plan. And if you're wondering when the app is going to be released to the public, well, the wait is nearly over. We expect to release it on August 30th, 2016. But now, let's get to the TAF. Terminal aerodrome forecasts, if available, are your primary means for determining whether you need to file an alternate or not, as well as providing the most detailed information about the weather at your destination. Keep in mind that TAFs are generally good for 24 hours, but a new one is issued every 6 hours. This means that if you're planning your flight more than 6 hours before you're actually going to go wheels up, you will need to take a look at the TAFs again before filing. Maybe there was no need to file an alternate at the time you planned your flight. But the weather changed, and with the new TAF indicating one statue mile visibility half an hour before your arrival, an alternate is now required. And by the way, let's recap those alternate rules. The rule known as 1-2-3 rule. If, from an hour before to an hour after your estimated time of arrival at your destination, the ceiling is less than 2,000 feet and or the visibility is less than 3 miles, you have to file an alternate. Also, the airport you pick as an alternate must report that at the ETA, this time no one hour before, no one hour after, but rather at the time of arrival, the weather must be, if the alternate has a precision approach, at least 600 foot ceilings and 2 statue miles visibility. If it has a non-precision approach, at least 800 foot ceilings and 2 statue miles on the visibility. And if it has no approach whatsoever, don't know why you would pick that, but in any case, the weather must be VFR from the minimum en route altitude all the way to the landing. Now for a little advice on choosing an alternate. If your flight is a training flight, you will probably eventually be going back to your base, so why not pick your home base as your alternate, obviously weather permitting. For example, I fly out of Morristown, New Jersey, and generally go practice in the Orange County area. Morristown is always my pick for an alternate. If you're going for a real cross country, and the weather requires you to file an alternate, then pick wisely. What I mean is, if an alternate is required, this means the weather is definitely going to be marginal or worst. Don't try and pick an airport that is close by just for commodity. Pick something that has easy approaches and possibly very good weather. Always prepare for worst case scenarios. If you're in trouble or you lose communications, you want the easiest way out possible. Picking an alternate that has VFR weather will definitely make your life easier. If VFR weather is not an option, then obviously you should pick an airport that has an easy ILS approach. Spend some time on the planning. Don't just look at an airport and say, oh yes, it has an ILS approach, let's go ahead and pick that one. And now, while in severe weather with lost comms, you find out that that ILS has a DME arc leading to it and 15 step-down fixes. By spending those extra 15 minutes during your planning, you're going to avoid unpleasant surprises during your actual flight. In my opinion, an ILS approach is the easiest approach to fly. In the absence of an ILS, pick an airport that has an approach type which you enjoy flying. A GPS approach would be my second pick, but if an NDB approach is what floats your boat, well, then go for that. Now, let's take a look at the actual TAF. This one here reads that it was issued on the 10th of the month at 2326 Zulu and will be valid on the 11th of the month from midnight to midnight. The wind is reported at 1907 knots with 5 statue miles on the visibility, light rain, mist and the clouds are overcast at 500 feet. Wind shear is also reported at 2000 feet from the direction of 240 at 40 knots. From 01 Zulu, the winds will be 190 at 7, 1 statue mile on the visibility, mist, and overcast at 300 feet. From 8 Zulu, winds 240 at 10 knots, more than 6 statue miles on the visibility, scattered at 300 feet, broken at 25,000 feet, and so on. If this was our destination airport, we would need to file an alternate all the way up to 8 Zulu, 
because at 8 Zulu, the ceiling is finally at 25,000 feet, and the visibility is more than 6 statue miles. Remember, that scattered is not a ceiling, so that 300 feet scattered does not dictate an alternate. The actual best way to look at the TAFs using ADDS is by using the Java tools. You can do this by clicking, tapping on the Java tools on the top menu, and then selecting the TAF Interactive GIS map. This gives us an overview of all the TAFs on our route. From here, we can immediately determine if the weather will be VFR, marginal, or IFR. As usual, the legend at the bottom makes our job real easy. It even gives us the possibility of decoding everything. A green airport indicates VFR, blue marginal VFR, red IFR, and light purple, low IFR. And if we actually want the full TAF to be displayed, all you need to do is tap on the airport in question, and the full TAF will be displayed. The TAF is generally the only written report I look at, unless my destination airport does not have a TAF. In that case, you would need to look at the area forecast to determine whether you need an alternate or not. But again, in reality, just looking at this interactive chart gives us an idea of where the weather will be VFR, marginal VFR, and IFR, giving us a good idea of whether we need to file an alternate or not.